to moving forward. So we've done the introductions. So those watching the recording will miss that, but a very interesting group of, of people. Um, just in case you don't know much about Zero Waste Scotland, we're funded by the Scottish Government with the aim of making Scotland make better use of resources and products. Um, and really trying to move Scotland towards a circular economy. Um, I know circular economy is a term that some people know, but actually really isn't in the general public's kind of sphere just yet. So I quite like this slide, which I think shows it quite simply that we're trying to move people from this linear economy where we make things, we use them and we dispose of them to a circular economy where we keep things in use for as long as possible to avoid them ending up in the bin. Um, we kind of transitioned through the recycling economy, which I think for the last 20 years or so, the councils have really been pushing the need to recycle more, which is great, but you know, recycling still uses a lot of resources and we can't recycle everything and we can't recycle everything infinitely. Uh, you know, there is a, some things can only be recycled a certain number of times before the quality is so poor, it's not worth it anymore. And uh, people sometimes think, oh, this is just about the environment. And they're maybe not quite bought into the whole idea of climate change. But I think when we can explain that actually the circular economy goes beyond that. You know, it's about mitigating the impact of resource scarcity. So we know like when things kicked off with Russia, we were struggling to get oil and other things. Um, there's obviously there's finite resources for things like some of the elements are going to our laptops, our phones, things like that. If we have a truly circular economy, it will help resource, um, reduce our impact on getting these new resources um, and make us, us more sort of sustainable for the future. Also, you know, material co consumption has an impact on also so many other things deforestation land use all of these things extraction and disposal of these items is getting harder and harder um, but also it creates local jobs which i think you know for those that aren't that worried about the environment they normally are worried about the economy and local jobs and so i like to stress that if we're buying cheap tap from china the only local job is probably your delivery man uh, whereas if we are repairing things, we're reusing things, we're going to keep the jobs more close to home. So I think, again, for the general public, the circular economy is not necessarily an expression that kind of really means a lot to them. Probably it's better to talk in terms of reduce, reuse, recycle. And people understand that a bit more. Um, but also, again, I like to stress that the reduce and reuse come first because they are so preferable to recycling. So recycling still has an important part to play, but it's not the best option. We also launched a report a few years ago um, looking at consumption, and we did a big campaign around this. Basically, the report suggested that 82% of our carbon footprint in Scotland comes from consumption. So all the goods, materials, services that we produce, use, and often throw out after just one use. Um, so it is something we really need to address. And again, people say, well, it's not us, it's China, it's America, all of this. But you think where we're getting our stuff from, we import so much of it. So actually our impact goes well beyond the shores of Scotland. Um, so we can't just think about the carbon, direct carbon impact of Scotland. And we are particularly bad. When you look at the figures, we are very, very high consumers of so many things. Things like food and textiles, we consume a lot more than most countries around the world. And our average carbon footprint per person is 13 tonnes of CO2, whereas we need to get down to about 0.36, which sounds a bit daunting. I think when you put it like that, you think, oh, God, why bother? You know, we're never going to do that. So I think it's stressing that actually small steps do make a difference. Um, you know, we are not going to tackle it all in one go. But if everybody does their little bit, you know, if five million people in Scotland do one little thing better, it's going to make a big difference. So it's really trying to make it sound achievable. In terms of achievable um, and also 
another one of the the kickbacks we often get is people say it's not us it's the manufacturers it's the restaurants it's all of this stuff um so i just loved this quote that uh somebody saying that actually it's very easy to design and manufacture a toaster that will last 20 years what's not so easy is to design and manufacture a toaster that someone will want to keep for 20 years because as people we haven't been trained to do that and it's so true you just need to look at the sales and wanted sites and there are a million and one good as new things for sale that people don't want because they've gone off the color they want the latest model all of these things. So, you know, manufacturers, governments can do so much, but actually we need to address people's perceptions and demands as well. So the circular economy, I think this slide from Circular Community Scotland sort of sums it up quite nicely that, yeah, we can make things differently, that's great, but we also need people to choose things differently. Uh, we need people to reuse, to repair, and recycling, recycle. And if we do all of those things, hopefully we can move towards a circular economy. So Zero Waste Scotland, we are effectively a delivery body for the Scottish government. So things like the carrier bag charge, when they brought that in, we were tasked with kind of making it actually happen. Um, we also support businesses, local authorities, community groups, and we run campaigns um, and various trials. We're kind of evidence-led organisations, so we like to trial things and do reports and share the learning. Um, but today we particularly want to focus on Fife, um, and I think this is where you guys are so important, because at the end of the day, we work across Scotland, but we're not experts in Fife and what's going on there, but you are. Um, we don't have a local presence, but you do. Um, so, you know, a lot of people distrust government funded organizations, they don't particularly want to listen to us, but they'll listen to people in their own community that understand what's going on and their needs. So I think it's far more effective if we can work with you guys and support you. Um, and so that's why I love sessions like this, because we get to have a chat and find out what you need and how we can help you um, and work together. So I'd like to go through a few different sort of areas of some of the key things we've worked on. And there's loads and loads of links to resources here. Um, and we'll have a bit of a chat about some of the areas. Um, but then also say it'd be good to get some feedback from you guys as to again, what you're doing and what, what would be useful. So one of the first ones, and I think that's quite appropriate because um, Joe mentioned it, was about food waste. Um, so we do quite a lot around food waste. We have a food team who work with businesses um, and local authorities and the general public. Um, and I also will happily do workshops, train the trainer type sessions. So we have like a, a one hour workshop where we go through why food waste is such a problem and some of the sort of things people can do to reduce food waste. So I'm happy to do that if that helps people. Um, we run campaigns, so like the Down the Drain campaign was about highlighting actually that throwing drinks down the drain is as bad as throwing food as, away. Um, we ran a campaign, which was all about highlighting the benefits of canned food, um, which was, uh, Joe talked about stigma with kind of um, food banks and things, but I think there's also a bit of a stigma about cans. We actually spoke to one woman at a festival this year. And she said, oh, cans are for poor people. And you're like, mm, no, they're really not. They're about, actually, the, the food in them is good and nutritious because the, the nutrition has been sealed in, but have a really good long shelf life. So good for reducing food waste, um, but also really tasty, really good backup, you know, if, if you haven't managed to get to the shops. Um, sometimes if you've got a tin of tomatoes, a tin of sweet corn and things, you can normally chuck something together. So there are lots of recipes and things shared as part of that. Um, and there's loads more resources on the website and the social media. Uh, but some of the things happening in community groups, we mentioned the community fridges. Um, the community fridge fund is open only for another week and a bit. So if anyone's considering getting a community fridge, um, get onto that now. Um, and as Joe said, it's, it's kind of si similar thing with community pantries 
they are about reducing food waste. They're not about poverty. So they are open to everybody. Um, so again, like Joe said, there is a, a bit of a stigma and people don't really realize that. And we'd speak to people about community fridges and they say, oh, I can't go because I can afford my food. You're like That's not the point. Um, so yeah, happy to help promote those. And we've got like a little video and some bits on our website at the moment linked to the, the fund with some case studies and things. If you do run, um, like Joe's running the pantry, we also have a food redistribution matchmaking service to try and link people up with organizations that have surplus food. Um, and we do a lot of work with food and drink businesses. So there's links there to support. Um, and there's a one month food waste challenge going on at the moment for small businesses as well to look at that. There's some teaching resources there for schools uh, food waste monitoring toolkit for schools, um, because we see it's difficult to tackle food waste until you know actually how much you've got of it and how how it's coming about. Um, and the last one there, back to Amanda's point, is um, a resource we created recently, the Highland Community Composting Guide. Um, some of the links are specific to the Highlands because it was developed for them, but a lot of it is pretty generic and talks about some of the regulations and the, the do's and don'ts. So have a look at that and hopefully um, that might help a little bit. So that's everything I wanted to say about um, food waste. So just well, to put it over to you guys and say, I mean, we talked a little bit at the beginning about what you're doing around food waste, but is there anything else that you're doing around food waste or that you've seen others doing that you'd like to do? or any particular issue around food waste that you want to address? Hi, um, I was just gonna come in there. Um, yeah. I was just thinking you've kind of, my eyes lit up when you said you do a food redistribution matchmaking service, because I think that's something that in Dunfermline, all the food, community food projects, um, we would like to really be matchmaked with um, that. Uh, where some of us are using a fair share and sometimes you know you go to get your fair share but you have to go to somewhere further away to get it and mm -hmm. um, even though you could be using your local supermarket um, and it was just because of a kind of communication that the all the different projects didn't really know who else was doing what and um, so we've we've created the Dunfermline Community Food Forum um, which is all the the community ones and um, get together and make sure everyone knows what each other's doing um, but there's a kind of higher up thing where, yeah, we'd really be interested in finding more about that, the food redistribution. Um, that would be very helpful for us. Excellent. Oh, well, I, ha I mean, I haven't tried it personally. I haven't been involved. So, um, yeah, click on the link and give it a go. Um, we'll get to Mandy can send out the slides with all the links afterwards. Um, but, yeah, give it a go and let us know how you get on. Yeah. Amanda, did you have anything to add there? Um, well... I think Fife Council collects food waste in some instances, but I'm just not sure when, when and where and how well, you know, how often, you know, people use that. Do you have any statistics on like, you know, how much food waste is collected by councils and also how much food waste is, is uh, given by shops to things like food banks? I mean, is it good in Fife? I don't know if Mandy knows any differently or or Joe. Um, I don't know specifically for Fife, but I know uh, on a slide later on, because um, it's Recycle Week this week, we've just promoted the household waste recycling data. Um, and I'm not sure, I think that might go into it and might break it down by council area. So I can have a look at that afterwards. Um, but the link to the report is later on. Um, so I can have a look at that. Um, but yeah, I suspect we, that might be in there. Thank you. We, we have a brown bin, a brown wheelie bin. And so all our food waste goes into that in the little kind of green caddy bags or you can wrap it in newspaper. But who buys newspapers these days? Um, <laughs> but you can do that. You could also, I suppose that's another idea, is again with my grown space remit, I'm hoping that people will learn how to compost more so that then you're actually using your your raw food waste, like your tatty peelings and all that, 
start to learn how to compost and you can even compost in your own garden even if you're not gardening in your garden if you know what I mean you could still have a compost bin um, mm -hmm. to do that and make your own compost and you could give it to other people or give it to the local community garden um, and that's another idea is community gardens and putting your food waste there um, but I think it's for kind of the leftover you know chips and chicken nuggets like <laughs> sorry I've got three kids so this is the reality but <laughs> it's you know it's that kind of food waste like where yeah what does happen what aye that's a massive thing isn't it it is definitely yeah and I think as Amanda says if you're in a rural area you don't get the food waste recycling like I don't I'm I'm in a sort of a farming area as well so yeah but um I do my home composting so yeah encouraging that is is great and yeah really good again it's something we used to promote um and we used to do discounted compost bin um sort of sales but I think the the kind of the sales had died off and actually the, the costs of the logistics of doing it made it untenable to to continue um but yeah you, and people can make their own compost bins you know uh, New Zealand boxes and things like that so promoting all that sort of things really good excellent so yeah the next area I was going to mention was about reusing repairing sharing all of these sorts of areas um and there's some really good support out there if anybody's looking at doing any projects like this um we fund a share and repair network and their task is to try and get I can't remember the number but a number of libraries of things and repair cafes across Scotland. Um, so I don't, if you've got any sort of tool libraries or libraries of things in the area. Um, so, oh, I don't, Mandy, you unmuted. Were you going to say something? Yeah, sorry. This is going to sound like another shameless plug, but our next how-to on the uh, 30th of November is actually on how to set up a repair cafe. Maybe you were going to say that anyway, Miriam, because I know you've been instrumental in helping that. Yeah, no, I wouldn't rem remember the date. So that's perfect. Thank you. But yeah, so if you've never been to a library of things or a tool library, it's basically like a book library, but you can borrow all sorts of stuff. Um, some of them are called tool libraries. but I think that's a bit misleading and limiting because it goes well beyond tools. Um, but I always sort of stress the there's a stat that they reckon the average power drill is used for 13 minutes in its lifetime. And yet so many households have one, which is such a waste of resources and money. So I always say to people, you don't want a power drill. You want a hole in the wall. So why buy a power drill? Go and borrow one. Um, uh, but some of them have all sorts of things. Some have camping equipment, um, kids' toys, kitchen equipment, all sorts of different things. So they can be a really good way to reduce waste. Um, and repair cafes, again, they are a brilliant thing. They tend to be run by volunteers, uh, lots of people who just like tinkering and fixing things. Um, and they tend to vary depending on which tinkerers they've got there as to what you can take along. But it tends to be things like textiles, sometimes electrical equipment, and they might do pat testing or change plugs, things like that. Um, jewellery I've seen fixed up some bikes um, really varies but if anyone's thinking of setting these up as say the shirt and repair network are there to support new ones and existing ones um, so really worth getting in contact with we also run something called revolve reuse um, which you may have heard of in the past it was basically a quality standard for reuse stores um, they've changed the tax slightly. So now it's basically it's a free resource hub. Um, so anybody that wants to run any reuse or repair projects, there's a load of really useful information and training that is available to anybody running those things. Um, but other things, there's a community, I think loads of stuff that can be done. So thinking about things like swap shops are always really popular, promoting secondhand shopping, selling, and donating. You know, I think youngsters are really into that. They've got Vinted and Depop and all these things. But often the older generation doesn't really know how to do this stuff um, and could do a whole lot more. Workshops could do stuff around upcycling, sewing, repairing, all this stuff. Um, a plug for the Greener Kokodi Reuse and Repair Guide. I think these guides are really useful. And that's a really good example. 
because a lot of people want to reuse or repair but don't know how or where to go so some of these guides can be really good um I'd, so yeah setting one up for lots of different areas could be really useful schools um doing things like school uniform reuse projects um students if there's like colleges or universities I know St Andrews have done a lot about clearing out student accommodation when people leave at the end of the year um, because they leave all sorts of stuff that could be reused. Um, Secondhand clothes fashion shows can be a real fun one. I went to a really good one in Glasgow where they did the fashion show, but then in between each sort of catwalk session, they had videos about why textile waste is such a problem and things we can do about it. So things like that can be really engaging and really good fun. And I think also when you're doing things like swap shops and fashion shows, you're getting the people who aren't committed greenies because they're coming along to get free stuff or to have a clear out or what, or to have a fun night out. Um, and so you're kind of getting them engaged in environmental stuff without really sort of making it seem too geeky or too, too uh, tree huggy. Um, and if you can provide free food at these things, especially I think the love food, hate waste stuff, when there's cookery demos or free food, again, you get so much more traction, so many more people coming along because they're coming for a free feed, but then they're getting the environmental messages kind of subliminally, I can't even say that word, subliminally, yeah, you know what I mean, um, kind of drilled into them. Um, and with reuse also, just to not forget some of the things we, we don't think about so much. So I know textiles were quite good. A lot of people donate unwanted textiles or buy secondhand but also furniture, electrical items, I think a real big one. Um, and the two middle pictures were at Perth College who were running a, a wee centre where they were getting students to fix electrical items that were broken and then sell them, which was helping to fund the project whilst developing the skills of the pupils. Um, and they had cabinets like this green one for people to drop off unwanted items. Um, and we ran a campaign encouraging people to get their unwanted electrical items out of the drawer because like so many of us have a, a stash of old mobile phones that we keep just in case one breaks down. And before you know it, there's like five in the drawer that could have been reused. Also bikes, toys, all these sorts of things. Um, just really trying to get people aware of the reuse of these things. So. Again, over to you guys. Is there anything you're doing about reuse, repair and sharing? Anything you've seen that you'd love to replicate or something that, that you just would like to see? N not me personally, but I have mentioned to you, Mariam, that someone else in our team, um, she is based up in Kingsbarns, well, she lives in Kingsbarns, and, and in her school, they've started a, um, a, probably a boot library is the best way to describe it, where the, in the girls' football team, so everybody's brought in their kind of, you know, as kids outgrow the sizes, and they actually have a kind of football library or it's not a library really because you can come and take it but you can bring it back when <laughs> when it's outgrown and it's been very successful it probably was initially started as a cost of living uh, measure but it's actually really um helping with, with promoting kind of reuse principles in, in that community brilliant yeah I, I keep forgetting to mention the cost of living thing but yeah i mean all these things that we're saying can save money um, the reducing food waste, the, the getting secondhand furniture, textiles, electrical equipment, bikes, all of it is fits in so nicely with that. Amanda, you'd unmuted yourself. Oh, well, thanks. Um, I mean, I I think we're quite lucky in Anstruff that there's a community kist, which is like a secondhand shop, and, and the woman sells donated secondhand things, but she um gives the money, gives her profits to charity. So that's really good. And and of course, I think as you mentioned, St Andrews University has a transition group and mm -hmm. they run a sort of library where you can borrow equipment, things like strimmers and um even electric cargo bikes. So yeah. I think we're quite lucky with that. But I think a repair cafe would be a really good idea. I haven't come across one of those around here. 
Yeah, yeah. worth looking online. As, as I said, there's the Share and Repair Network that can help with that, but there's also um, a Repair Cafe International organisation um, and Restart in London is a kind of UK-based organisation that do repair cafes, but specifically for electrical items. Um, but you can make them as big or as small as you like and start small and say, right, we're going to do a repair cafe, but just for textiles. Um, and give it a go, see how it works, and then maybe develop onto other things. Um, I think some people have done them tied in with men's sheds because they're sort of a wealth of of great skills for for fixing and tinkering with things. Um, so yeah, give them a try. Yeah, and and contact the share and repair network and and see what help they can give you. And Amanda, not probably not a many miles from you, um, in Daisy, there's actually a repair cafe. And they run a repair cafe, I think it's the last Thursday evening of every month. Um, and it's, from what I've heard, super popular. They, you know, I don't think they can get, they go onto their Facebook page and they actually after each event say how many items they've repaired. So it seems really successful. And then, um, Joe, maybe a bit closer to you, Grow West Fife in um, Kuros. I really hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, they are kicking the issue of hopefully having their first one, I think I said on the 18th of November. So I, I, I don't know whether that's probably not 100% in, in what you're looking at, Joe, but that might be worth going to see what they're up to as well that day. I, the date's not confirmed, but that's what they're aiming for. Yeah, you're right. It's Kuras. It's spelled Cole cool. Ross, but it's Kuras. Um, I was close. I didn't, I didn't learn that <laughs> until I moved to Fife, by the way, because I'm from Edinburgh and I had no clue. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you are right with the, see all the crafty stuff, the sewing classes, learn how to use the sewing machine, all that kind of stuff um, has been really popular with our communities. Um, and just in the past, I've worked with different kind of men's shed, community shed, all those kind of things. They have been really popular. I suppose for me, it is about that you know how many people have got those skills nowadays it seems to be a kind of dying trade doesn't it so yeah. it's about teaching people how to do the skills first and then starting your kind of repair shops and things like that because i i just don't think there'd be enough people at the start do you know do you know what i'm saying like so mm -hmm. it's about just doing it for fun first but then thinking oh how can we reuse these clothes um something that's personal to myself um I, my mum passed away earlier this year and we had her old clothes and you just wonder what to do I could have just put them in the charity shop but I thought hmm, it's not very personal and so I've ended up making teddy bears for all the grandchildren um, and I just thought you know it's reusing it and they'll keep those teddy bears well hopefully they'll last for the rest of their life I'm not hopefully not doubting my sewing skills too much in there but I just think people would love to do things like that. Like if they could learn how to make a teddy bear, I mean, how nice is that? If you're going along to your group every week to learn how to make a teddy bear or something, a cushion or something for your house, like you're saying, everyone goes to Next and buys the latest tartan cushion and latest fabric. But actually, if you're just using old clothes to then make new things, I think that's fun. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to get, you know, these kind of things. But the other issue is, I am one of these people that's interested in everything and I want to do everything and I actually can and I need to tell myself to stop and you know you, I'm sure you guys are the same because once you get into one subject like oh we could do this as well we could do that so I suppose what I'm thinking I have to keep telling myself we need to do it in really good quality and um, you know stick to one thing and do it really good quality because it is amazing other organizations out there doing all the other stuff as well yeah. um, so it's about working in partnership with them and not just trying to do everything yourself kind of thing. Absolutely. And one thing actually I forgot to put on any of the slides was, I don't know if you've heard of the Community Learning Exchange, um, but there is a fund out there for if you're looking to set up something and you want to go and visit a project that's already doing that thing, um, you can get some funding that can help, I think, cover your travel expenses, but also give a bit of money to the organisation that you're visiting to kind of cover their time um, when you're visiting. But it's really just about trying to encourage that peer-to-peer -peer learning because pretty much these days, everything we want to do, somebody else has done it first. So why reinvent the wheel, you know, get out there and see what they're doing. And I think with repair cafes, what some people have done is get another organization to come and run a repair cafe in, in their area for them. So you can see how much of an appetite there is for it. You can learn from the other organization that's experienced in running them and then pick it up from there. 
so yeah do use other people you know don't feel you're you're alone and you're having to start from scratch there's a lot of help out there excellent so next area i realize i'm running out of time here so I'll try and whiz through this a bit um single use uh, i think joe mentioned this is a bit of your bugbear some of the single use stuff um and i think mandy did as well uh, we've done a lot around this and, and again I run workshops where I sort of get people to look at lots of single use items and say you know what could you do differently what alternatives are there um, and there's so many good ideas out there it's, it's always quite fun. Um, we've done a few pilots we did a pilot in Portobello near Edinburgh looking at a lot of single use items and there are a load of resources on our website from that. Uh, we're just finishing a reusable cup project in Stirling, uh, where we had about 15 cafes signed up. So the idea is you could go and pay a one pound deposit for a reusable cup in one cafe, walk down the high street and go and drop your empty cup off at another cafe and get your pound back. So it was trying to sort of accommodate people wanting to maybe not always go back to the same place again with their coffee cup. Um, and Keep Scotland Beautiful have gone even more ambitious than that and done a, cap, a cup <coughs> excuse me a cup scheme around the north coast 500 route so in theory you could get your coffee in Thurso and then go and drop it off in Inverness um so very ambitious uh if you do have organizations like the cafe that Joe is in that you think could learn a thing or two we are running a webinar on the 22nd of November all about this and it is aimed at businesses, but also schools, leisure centres, museums, anywhere that kind of has disposable coffee cups. Um, it's free to attend. So the link is there. Um, and please do sign up and share with your networks. Um, and have a think about you know, your organisation, your community, local businesses, your personal shopping, what you could do to reduce single use. Um, and a lot of the focus has been on coffee cups, but certainly the Portobello pilot, we also looked at things like sauce sachets and sugar sachets, coffee stirrers, napkins, takeaway containers, all of these sorts of things. So, you know, it's worth thinking about all of this. Um, if there are refill stores in the area, it's worth promoting those. I think those are one of those things that a lot of people think is a very expensive and a bit of a middle class thing but actually can work out cheaper because you can get exactly what you need. Um, and the last link there is that in November, it is European Week for Waste Reduction. Um, and as part of that, uh, we are looking for communities, organisations, individuals, anybody to do campaigns, events, whatever, around reducing waste. Um, preferably around packaging, because that's the theme this year, but it could be anything waste waste reduction related uh, and you register your event on their website um, and get to take part in this kind of big um, European wide scheme. I know we're not part of Europe anymore but they're still letting us in. Um, and just on single use again something else not to forget about things like period products and nappies. Um, we did a big campaign a few years ago about period products because the average menstruating person will dispose of 11,000 period products in their lifetime, most of which are full of plastic and a lot of which end up down the drain. Um, so there's some resources and things around that. And I know Plastic Free Dalgetty were doing a bit around that because Rebecca had been in touch. Um, so again, might be able to see what they were doing. Um, so... Does anyone have any thoughts about any of this single use stuff and what you've seen or what you would like to do? Can I just point out one thing as well? So yeah. like when I started looking into all this, what I actually found was, like you said, it's all been done before because what did people do in olden days before plastic was even a thing? Yeah. And I think if you look back to what people used, it gives us a good idea of what we can use now. Yeah, absolutely. I know a few people mentioned plastic when we were doing our introductions, but actually as part of these workshops I do, we keep stressing, actually it's not, not about eliminating plastic, it's the single use. So things like Tupperware, if you're anything like me, I've had Tupperware tubs for like 20, 30 years. They're plastic, but boy, have I got use out of them. You know, they are a really good use of plastic. Um, so I got mad. Sorry, yeah. 
I was just going to say, have you got magic powers? Because I just lose all my tougher real lids. They seem to go disappearing. How did you manage that? Uh, yeah, I just don't let my husband play with them. He avoids them like the plague because he can never find the lids. So yeah, I think maybe we need to maybe we need to start an exchange Tupperware lid and bottom kind of library. <laughs> yeah, very true. Um, but yeah, so just things like that. As I say, we try and stress it's not necessarily about plastic because there's there's also a big bugbear of mine is about compostable. That you get so many people saying it's all right we haven't got plastic we got compostable and you're like yeah but what are you doing with your compostable cup oh yeah i'm not quite sure what to do with it um and there's a lot of issues with compostable items but people think they're great because they're not plastic so that's my bugbear i won't go on about that <laughs> so conscious um joe's got to go in seven minutes so I'll whiz on very briefly. I said recycling is kind of the poor relation of some of these other things, but it's still important. This week is Recycle Week, um, and there's a link there to that household waste composition analysis. So that's where I'm hoping, Amanda, you might get your answers, that it might tell you a bit more about the situation in Fife. Um, and so I'm not sure if it mentions food waste, so I will have a look at that afterwards. Um, but you can also help you know, encourage people in your area to understand what they can and can recycle. And I'm sure council would be delighted for any help that gets their contamination waste uh, reduced. Uh, we do have a recycling sorter, which is a kind of tool to help you find what can be recycled. But also as the council website, um, I said, don't forget food waste recycling where that is appropriate. Um, there are some schools resources on recycling and food waste recycling. They might be a little out of date now, um, but probably still some good ideas in there. And TerraCycle, if you haven't come across them, they do lots of recycling schemes for some of the, the less common items. So things like toothpaste tubes and contact lenses and all sorts of things like that. So um, they're worth having a look at. Um, and the last it sort of area I was just going to mention was litter and fly tipping so our work is very much about prevention we don't really focus on the litter picking side of things um, but we've got a few toolkits and things like that for trying to reduce it and some stuff for schools as well to look at but obviously if you're looking at litter picking keep Scott and Beautiful and Marine Conservation Society are probably your your two main kind of go-to organizations so just got links to um, our website, our social media, and my contact details there. Uh, but that was all the slides I wanted to go through so that we've got a few minutes before Joe has to go. If there's any kind of final comments or anything that I haven't covered or anything you would like to see in the future, Joe, I guess particularly for Mandy, who's looking at kind of what support um, she can give to organizations in Fife and what events to run in the future. So any any comments or any thoughts? Um, I just think that's really interesting. All the links that you've gave there, you know, um, are going to be really helpful um, as well. Yeah. And when you send out the PowerPoint, I'll forward that to everyone in the Salon Environment Group and obviously anyone in my community groups that is interested. Um, I can forward it on to them as well and just let them have a look through it. Um, Thanks. But yeah, just just have just knowing that you guys are there. I knew you were there. Like of course I know about Zero Waste Scotland, but do you know how you just you get bogged down in your day to day? Yeah. You kind of forget, oh Zero Waste Scotland, of course, why am I not getting in touch with them and do stuff, you know? So I was really glad when this got flagged up to me, this this webinar thing. So yeah, just really helpful. Oh for you good. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we've got so many resources, but sometimes it's a nightmare trying to find the relevant things or what's there or the right person to talk to. So hopefully this is, gives you a kind of a starter for 10 and then you can, can find out more. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Yes, really re echoing what Joe said. It's been really useful. Thank you. Um, you know, lots of interesting links and resources that I didn't know about that I can follow up so thank you that oh, would be brilliant thanks and Mandy do you want to remind us of the date of these these next sessions you've got coming up 
Yeah, so the so the the no, November one is on how to set up a repair cafe. Um, that's on the thirtieth of um, November in a sort of um twelve to one slot again, um, and then we're gonna land the date for the December one later this week. So maybe I'll hold or, or or I can follow up with a different email um with regards to that one, but it'll probably be a similar sort of lunchtime slot, and that will be the the community fridge, but we could send that link out about the funding when we send out the the, the deck um and then um we we will land a couple more in the early in the new year as well we we're running um and and you will get some communication about this from us but we're going to do a, a five climate festival at the end of uh february into march and we'll not just invite all the groups to to do events but we'll absolutely publicize and there will be a lot more things like that so Marimo and i have talked about doing maybe one or two how to's sessions during that festival as well so there's lots of this um coming up um and i think you may be on our newsletter already or you've indicated you're happy to be so you so just keep an eye out for that and you'll always be alerted to um sessions we have coming on thank you perfect that's great oh it looks like joe's uh, contact has arrived <laughs> you can see the waving i think she's just or i'm fine thanks claire i think she's just ordering herself a wee coffee there in another disposable cup. <laughs> uh, tell you what, I'm not coming back here. So the reason the reason I chose it is because I could so I could walk from my dad's. I've left the bearings at my dad's, and yep. I thought, where can I walk to so I can get a nice bit of fresh air? Yep. Um, and this is just around the corner. And then I got in and ordered it, and I was like, oh my god, I just didn't know. Like I thought they would have given me a cup anyway. You didn't have to confess. You could have just kept your camera off, and we'd never know. <laughs> oh, well, I think the good thing is, is, is if it's so absolutely ingrained that you spot those things. I mean, that's a, a really good place to be. So exactly, I'll reuse it as a plant pot, <laughs> or a kind of cup and ball game with the gates, kind of. Yeah, sounds good. Brilliant. Oh, I hope your next meeting goes well, Joe, and that. Uh... Yeah, feel free to get in touch, both of you, if uh, you've got any questions or any of those links don't work or anything like that. So thank you. But thank best you. of luck. Thank, thank you, everyone. Me. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. You too. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.